Greetings. This is Ken McAuliffe, the jazz vinyl lover. Late night, Grand Trillage, New York City. You are looking and listening to Lee Morgan's Lee Morgan Volume 3, Blue Note 1557. One of the most valuable records in the entire Blue Note discography in its first pressing iteration. Good morning. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about Blue Note Records and why Blue Note Records, especially the first pressings, are so expensive in their auction status. You know, I work at the Jazz Record Center, this really amazing store in the city, on Saturdays. And the owner, Fred Cohen, I asked him once, uh, I originally worked for him in the early 90s, and I said, what did Blue, uh, first pressing Blue Note Record go for, like 1990? And he said, 40 bucks. Any one of them went for 40 bucks. And that's when the Japanese would come in the store and buy giant stacks of the records. I wish I'd had the money or the knowledge then to know what was going to happen. The Japanese did, obviously. Um, but uh, since then, and more recently, Blue Note Records, such as first pressing, such as this copy of Lee Morgan, Volume 3. Leo Parker let me tell you about it. And I know the records are backwards. I'm shooting in selfie mode, so everything's backwards for the time being. I Quebec's Blue and Sentimental, and Kenny Burrell's Blue Lights, uh, sort of in decreasing um, value, will all go for tons of money. I've been lucky enough to uh, sell a guy's collection of Blue Note records, which are all in VG minus shape, and uh, this record will probably go cl for close to $800. It's perfect by no means. It's the beautiful laminate cover. Um, it has spine splits. The back is dirty. It was originally owned by a Belgian uh, record lover. His sticker is still on here. But the record has the P, the RBG etched, um, the deep groove, the flat rim, which are all signs of an early or a first pressing blue note from that period. And, uh, and the question is, why do they go for so much money? A, a, a mint copy of this record would probably go, would go for thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, this one will probably get about six or seven hundred dollars. And, uh, you know, Blue Note records just have a certain pedigree. Some of you probably already know this, but I think a lot of people don't. And if, unless you've heard a first pressing Blue Note, you really don't know what they sound like. Uh, people opt for uh, Music Matters records or quality pressings or classic records. None of those sound like a first pressing Blue Note record. There's something, especially in a mono version, there's something incredibly energetic and natural and focused about the sound of a first pressing Blue Note record that sounds like nothing else. I think Music Matters records sound beautiful, but they sound like they took the tapes and put them through a modern board, which is what they did. And so to me, they, they, they strip away the ambience, the sound of the original recording session. I want to be in that re recording session in Hackensack or in Patterson, New Jersey or in Englewood Cliffs where Rudy was cutting these records. Um, but anyway, these records have, a, have an amazing pedigree. They have Rudy Van Gelder. You know, uh, um, Blue Note Records, unlike the Prestige Records or some other records then, uh, Blue Note paid for rehearsals. So you're hearing a really refined product, unlike Prestige, which was more cash and carry, um, and not as much attention was paid, even though those are Rudy Van Gelder recordings as well, as our early Savoy records, which are great, and Impulse records. Um, but I think, I, you know, Rudy was very, uh, uh, he wouldn't share his secrets, which I think really kind of sucks. Um, uh, so we don't know if he thought about Blue Note differently than anything else. But for Blue Note, you had A, the, the amazing photography of Francis Wolfe, B, Rudy Van Gelder, and then you had the iconic artwork of Reed Miles, um, you know, which is, and all these things together create real art. And I think, especially in the Pacific Rim, these are treated as investments. I mean, I have regular buyers now in Singapore and Taiwan and Japan and Germany, and I wonder if they listen to the records. I think they just want to have it in their hands. This is the first pressing. I have my own first pressing now. Um, and these are becoming more and more rare. Until I, until I started selling this fellow's records, I never saw these records. I'd see them at the store every once in a while when they were going on auction. 
in mint condition. And when you see them in mint condition, they're stunning just to look at. They're just, I mean, the colors are so incredible. You can almost, you can sort of see it here. Um, the colors are so rich, you know, uh, and so penetrating. You don't see colors like this anymore. It, it, they're just such finely produced products uh, and they're real art. And then you have all the wonderful performances by all these amazing musicians, Coltrane, Lee Morgan, Hank Mobley, uh, Hart Taylor, it goes on and on. Anyway, that's my two cents. I'd be, uh, love to hear your comments about it. You can read my work at Stereophile, Downbeat, Bass Player, uh, where else? Redshift. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it.